So I'm here with Tony Reed, aka Growing Corn 2020. Yep. Um, and I, this is kind of a social media celebrity behind him too. His his 4010. Yep. There she sits. She's apart right now. You can't hold that against me. The red guys just keep it out of the comments. Yeah, they don't want yeah, to hear it. That's right. Know? Yep. Yeah, the cable to the rock shaft broke, so the three point wasn't working. So him and I just went and got a new cable for it, have her slapped back together, and that'll be it. So. Should be good to go. Yep. Be good for another 60 years. Yeah, yep. And I didn't figure there was no sense in buttoning it up. We're just gonna show it like it is and you know, yeah. no sense in sugarcoating it. So well and truthfully, half the 4010s that are still in use probably don't have those covers or anything <laughs> yeah, on exactly. anymore anyway. So right. Yep. <laughs> like, it's it's hard to complain, you know. The red guys probably go, there you go, it's broken again. Yep. But I mean it is sixty one years old. Yep, exactly. Point. So yep. and that okay. was the original cable that was on it. So it, yep. yeah, I think we got our money's worth out of it. So. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So we're going to talk about the 4010, but people aren't. So if, if you're watching this video and you're like, well, I've, I've seen all of Tony's TikToks about the 4010, we're not really going to talk about that. Like, the long and short of it is, just to get everybody up to speed, if you're not familiar with this tractor, is you got it, what, about two years ago? Uh, yeah, it was in June of 22, I believe. Okay. So. Yep. And your uncle gave it to you? Yep, sure did. So it was technically your yeah. uncle's? Yeah, he, he owned it my whole life. I think he bought it in 1982. He actually owned a construction business. He didn't farm. He didn't do anything. He just owned a construction business. And my grandpa did farm. And I think my uncle bought it. He used it a little bit on the construction business. And then grandpa used it from there on out farming. And it never really left grandpa's place ever. It was well, My uncle owned it, didn't farm, but it never left grandpa's farm and was used on the farm the whole time. Okay. So... so yeah, so you got it, fixed it up. It is what it is today, but we're gonna talk about back in the day. So, you know, your memories with this tractor probably go back as far as you can remember. Right? Yeah, the mid eighties. Yeah. Yep. So tell us about your grandpa's farm. Cause we've talked about this where, you know, farms are getting bigger and, and it's, it's always been that way, but your grandpa, had a fairly small farm. He did, yeah, back then. And I don't know if he ever farmed 500 acres, that would have been pushing it. I don't know that he ever got over that. But where he farmed was about 20 miles south of here uh, for the big, for everybody around here, the big town of Wright's Corner, which is a population of one, Loudon Township. Uh, it's just full of oil wells down there. <clears throat> and that's where my dad was born and raised. And that's where my grandpa farmed. And it's very, very, very small fields. I mean, if you got in a 19 acre field, that's like pulling into a square 160 up north. I mean, you know, it was just a lot of three and four acre patches here and there, just scattered all over, so. Okay, and he had cattle, right? He did, yep, raised Hereford cattle, and yep, I, I don't know, if I'd say the most he ever had at one time, 30 old brood cows, something like that, you know, had a lot of pasture where he was at, a lot of rough land yep. down that way. So, so was he, uh, was he raising steers or would he sell? He would sell. Feed? Okay, yep. sell feeders. Yep. Yeah, generally. I'm not saying every now and again if cattle got high, he wouldn't keep a, a lot back one time. But his primary deal was brood cows. Okay. So that's probably where most of the income came from was the cow yep. herd then. Yep, sure enough. Yep. Because it probably wasn't as lucrative for row crops those small right. fields. Right. In fact, down there later on in my life, it got to where him and my, when my dad started farming, and that's a whole other story in and of itself. Dad didn't farm until later on in life, and it was just kind of a semi-retired deal to play around with cattle but it got to where they didn't even raise corn the ground it's just it's a lot of clay knobs and timber around it it just wasn't good corn ground that you would associate with raising cattle you know we need to raise corn because yep. we got cattle they just didn't do that so yeah i mean you can get a crop of hay where yeah you're not going to put an ear on exactly so okay so he's you know got the the cattle herd and so before this tractor came along did he have he had a his actual biggest tractor was what a 4230 right yeah which it come after this okay it, it come in the oh it would have been the mid 90s this this showed up i think in 82 is when my uncle bought it i think grandpa probably started using around 83 ish thereabouts that 4230 probably didn't show up until 92 93 somewhere there, 10 years later so, okay yep. so before this came along he had a couple other so before this so even till the till I was graduated in high school and out, he he planted with a farm all H and a six row planter on six runners. Row. Yeah, John Deere twelve fifty or the yep. six ninety four. I don't remember which model, but the old metal boxes. Yep. You know, had that. 
uh, he had a WD AC, and then prior to this, he had an Oliver 88. And I think about the time this come along, they dumped the Oliver. Diesel, then, you think? No, it was gas. It was gas, yep. okay. Yep. Not so, a super either. No, no. Nope. Just a straight 88? Straight 88, okay. yep. Far, well, as far as I can remember, it was a straight 88. I, I could be wrong because I barely remember it, but I mean, it's been that long ago, but. But yep, so this was the workhorse for several years. A lot of hooking and unhooking. I mean, it was your big tractor to do everything. Oh, yeah. So. Well, and can you imagine going from an 88 being your big horse to this? Yeah. It probably... Yep. I mean... Yeah, in fact, the duels hardly ever come off of this tractor. When I was a kid, my uncle still got the duels for it, but I, I swapped tire sizes. When I got it, it had 18 434s. Yep. And then I jumped the tires up so they didn't do... And I wasn't ever going to put duels on it anyway, but... He, yep. Yeah, it had duels on it the whole time when I was a kid. So. Well, yeah, that was the... The yep. tillage, yeah, the tillage tractor. Yep, he had one of them John Deere. Uh, was it a a, a sixteen fifteen chisel plow? What was the model of that? Sixteen, I forget what it was, but just the straight chisels, you know. And I don't remember, I don't remember that thing was twelve foot wide, but you you'd always pull the two outside shanks, okay, off of this one, so so it could pull it. Then when the forty two thirty come along, then you could put them two two back on the outside. <laughs> but I don't remember now how how wide that thing was. That have sweeps then too? Uh, no, it was just your just straight. Shank. Yep, just okay. your straight shank chisels. Yep. So that was probably a narrow space. Cause was he finishing with that too, or one pass kind of? No, so it, it was a true John Deere chisel. You know, it oh, left okay, the, it the was big ridges. Yep. Yep. Sure enough. So okay, and I'm, I'm trying. I think my uncle still got him. I think that was a, a model sixteen fifteen. I believe is what that was called. Okay. I just remembered on the back, but I, I it's been too long ago now. So, so. then, did they uh, disc after that then? Yep. To finish. Okay. Yep. Was, so if there's a lot of clay knobs, there maybe it wasn't a ton of rock then. No, wasn't very very little rock to speak of. Yeah, okay. wasn't much at all. Yep. Yeah, that was always the program as a kid. It was chiseled, and then you disked it once, maybe twice, field cultivated it, and then planted it. Of course, with the planter on runners, you know, you had to have oh. a deep seed bed. You couldn't get them in nothing, you know. Well, and and I always say that about uh, planters, like a seven thousand John Deere corn planter will is capable of planting any crop you need. Yep. As long as the seed bed is good. You know, the metering system is great. Yep. It, it came down to the seed bed. So back then when you were full tillage, you'd work that ground till it's, yep. you know, I mean, your seed depth was right on the nuts because it was powder yep. on top. Sure enough. And that worked. Yep. So then I'm assuming uh, the H planted and then cultivated. Yes. It, well, so in my dad's time, it did. So, but by then he'd went to a rear mount cultivator. So then this, oh, so. Okay. This run a field cultivator and then a row crop cultivator. And then the H, about, about by the time I come along, about all it was doing was planting and then some hay work, you know, rake hay or something here or there. But Would he pop the duels off for the cultivator? He would, yes. Because okay. yeah, they were, they were uh, the snap-ons. They weren't hub duels yep. or nothing. So, yep, had to take them off. To so I was wondering, you didn't narrow this tractor up. It was narrowed up then. For yes, which years. actually the funny part was, was uh, when I went to slide this tractor in because... I don't know if, because I do remember Grandpa would plow some too when I was a kid, because I can always remember him. Oh, yep. I always got to, I remember as a kid watching him walk them wheels out. You know, you, yep. you just turn the rack and pinion and they come out. I yep. thought that was neat. So I remember him sliding them in and out. But when, uh, when I got it, it was out. It wasn't quite on 30s. It wasn't out real wide, but it wasn't quite on 30s. I wanted to get them slid all the way in. And when I went to do the front end, they, they'd been out one hole on each side. When I went to slide them in, they wouldn't go in any farther. And so I jerked the one side out and I got to doing some measuring and that was as far as that tractor would go in. Oh. And so I called uh, Jake Renner down at Belleville. You know, he's big into all these tractors. He said, yeah, it's what they call long knees. So he said, just take the chop saw and chop one off and yep. then it'll go on. So that's what I did. And then it went on in. But yeah, I, that tractor was in as far as it would go. But it, I was wanting to say it was on 32 or 33 inch centers. You couldn't they, get it. Couldn't and they ran it. it that way. Yep, sure did. Well, you better be paying yep, attention. Yep, exactly. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so, sure enough. Did, did they ever uh, put you in the cultivator and cross their fingers? Or? No, I'm trying to think. By the, time, by the time I was probably getting big enough to start cultivating, a, uh, or a little bit before that is when Roundup Beans, I think Roundup Beans come out in 96. Yeah, I think 96. And of right course, I'm, you know, I'm sure Grandpa didn't have them the first year. But yeah, for whatever reason, I didn't do much cultivating. I, I remember riding with Grandpa a lot on okay. it. But I'd just never done a lot of it myself. So. Which, speaking of that, if somebody in the comments remembers, there was the, when the Roundup Ready came out, I remember Monsanto had those ads with the John Deere Power Shift. Yep. And I've been trying to find that ad, and I can't really? find it anywhere. I'd dead. love to find that. Yep. You know? Yep. 
it's yeah that roundup ready thing was like whoa oh yeah it was just revolutionary yeah I mean, yep. yeah we don't do that anymore the no. way it did back then yep, but uh, that's right yeah that was really neat yeah so yeah rear mount cultivator boy yeah without it in all the way man you really had to watch that yeah because in fact when i got this tractor two years ago it still had the rods in the middle because you know, guys would always flip them down to, to run over the top of the row you know just a yep. marker that was still on there i peeled them off and they huh i didn't ever need them but wow sure enough but so, this tractor when i got it was in i'm not gonna say it was in rough shape it was in original condition paint yep. was real faded hood was really smashed in there this great big piece of steel was smashed but all that stuff it wasn't stuff my grandpa did i mean that stuff was yep. it, it was, it was bought that away because i don't know yep. he was always careful and wasn't tearing stuff up but uh yeah the guy that done it just done a phenomenal job on fixing it you know and guys wanted me to just clear coat it like it was and, and i get what they were saying but a it was in a little too rough a shape for that i thought and b i didn't want to remember that tractor you know i that was always my goal i wanted to fix this thing up nice. way back when yeah way back when i was a kid even back yeah. then when the paint was still good real good on it you know i still thought you know i'd always wanted to fix it up so yeah i made my mind up i was fixing it like this so, so you like john deere tractors for the sure. most part you like a lot of others yeah yeah I, i'm not really partial to any one I, I like to stir the pot a little yeah. but I, when it comes down to it i like them all i really do yeah but, but I suppose the 4010 versus the other tractors that were there, it's pretty easy to like the 4010. Absolutely. Yep. Sure enough. You know. Yep. Um, so he did mowboard plow too. Yep. He said. Would yep. he slide both wheels out then? I I was one to say he just done one. Okay. On that, but I'm not. That was, I can just barely remember, because he didn't plow a lot, but I just remember a handful of times when I was eight, nine years old, I remember watching him slide the wheel in and out. But I, I don't remember yeah. if he done them both or or what so yeah and, and people that don't know anything about mobile board plow and if, if you ran this with a semi-mount plow in the narrowed up position you'd lose good part of your first bottom yeah yep and I, i'm assuming back then he probably had a four bottom i don't even remember now what he had for a plow to be honest with okay. you. I, I just don't remember i know it was a john deere but i don't remember what it was so. okay and it had the turbo on it because it's got m and w turbo yes. on it yep sure enough yeah that that was on there my whole life so this tractor now actually has a 4020 engine in it Yep, not the so, 380. Whatever. Yeah, whatever it was. But when I was a kid, it was still original. It had the 4010 really? engine in it. And I don't know, it's been every bit of 10 years ago. After Grandpa sold out, I think he'd already passed away and everything, when my uncle took the tractor back and he just kept it around his place. He's retired now from mowing and just yep. goofing around, you know. And something happened in it. And uh, he couldn't either couldn't find a motor for a 4010 or the mechanic he took it to said well i've got a really good 4020 motor let's just throw that in there so he did and then when he did he didn't keep the turbo or none of that he's like well i don't need any of that now for just yep. blading rock and, and goofing off you know but that was the one thing that i had to put i don't care what oh, it yeah. cost i was putting the turbo back on it just because i can always remember that oil pan when i was a kid i, I don't know why just because it yep. stuck out being silver i yeah. just always re and of course back then i was this tall you know you walk up there this thing just looked oh, yeah. gargantuan you know well, and it, yeah, that was, that was a valuable pan. Yeah. Like there, and some guys didn't put that pan on and, and it takes more oil and, and yep. the oil gets hotter. Absolutely. Yep. You know, cause exhaust temps, the, the yep. whole work on the engine, everything. So, um, yeah, so it had the turbo Yep. and, uh, did you kind of love that sound? I know? did. Yeah. Yeah. To yeah. me, it's just a whole different sound and, it, and it's nothing spectacular and i've said it a hundred times this tractor is nothing fancy it's nothing rare it means nothing to anybody else on this planet but me you know it's it's it's, yeah. it's, it's nothing you know but it was just something about that turbo when i was a kid and i just that was going on there regardless oh yeah so. and yeah so your grandpa must have was he pretty fond of the 4010 he was yep yep back then that was his his go-to track that was his baby yep okay so. okay so it's probably he's pretty happy i bet that yeah absolutely you got her all yep sure enough you know yep. um so he's he and he was doing was he just feeding all his own corn the corn he was raising was he probably feeding that or was he no actually he wasn't he didn't have on farm storage okay so go to the elevator yeah yep so did he raise any corn silage for the no he didn't nope okay so nope, just, just hay yep just a lot of hay and then you know whatever the feed mill would bring and you know he had a little uh like a granary room there you yeah. know that they could dump bulk feed in and grain them that away or whatever you know i suppose turn the cows out on the corn stocks to some, some. yep sure yep. enough okay yep. yep 
Now, was he raising any wheat and grazed the wheat? He never grazed it. He raised a lot of wheat, but he never grazed it. He just was okay. strictly for grain. Yep. So, okay. So, yep. yeah. That makes so... Usually is what he would do is have clover in with the wheat, you know, so combine the wheat, then you had your clover and, yep. and all that, and you would try to squeeze, you know, I don't back then, I don't know if you could get two years out of that. I don't know what it was, you know. Yep. And then when it would kind of start to get thin, then he would generally fence it in and then let them work at the last year to yeah. really get the money out of it and then start over, you know, rip it up and then go to a different crop and then start the rotation back over. So, so was he small square bailing? Yes, all every that. bit of it. Yep. So no round bales, no choppers. There was, when I was probably 17, basically once all the grandkids started getting yeah. older and away, then the round baler showed up. But even then, it wasn't much. I mean, I'll, I'll bet in my entire life, I'll, I'll bet the man didn't round bale 100 bales. I mean, it was really? all small squares. Even yeah. uh, bedding for the cows and yep. stuff? Yep, everything was small squares. So did he have and, a big barn, a big two-story yep. barn? He did. Sure okay. Did. Yep. And see, there was a big family, so... In my dad's family, there was 15 kids. Wow. And of course, by the time they all had kids, I mean, there was a pile of grandkids. Yeah. So there was a lot of help anytime he needed it, you know. Okay. So, so did, he have a, um, did he have a shoot on the baler or did he have a kicker? He had a shoot on it. Yep. So okay. What do you have for a baler? He had a, uh, when I was a little kid, had an old international. I don't remember what model it was, but that thing had, had a zillion bales ran through it. But when I was probably 10 years old, bought a John Deere 336 wire tie. Oh, wire tie? Yep. And that was like a cat, and it was a really nice baler, and he that ran him the rest of his career. But he was pretty proud of that. I mean, it, it oh, uh, was a nice baler. Yeah. Well, in the yeah, in that video I did with Don Slama, I, I seven thousand corn planters were on farms of any color. Yep, John Deere three thirty six balers were yep. on a lot of different farms. Yep. Too. And why he went wire tie, I don't, I don't know. I, I remember the international was twine, and I don't know what his reasoning on the wire was or <laughs> what the deal was, but that's what he had. So. <laughs> I had always been nervous with that, like uh, for hardware in the cows or something. Yeah. Did, but, yep. um, and you know that baler did run. I mean, he very seldom ever, ever had problems with that. He ran a lot of bales through it. I mean, okay. the, it, it just ran. I mean, oh, they were, a, they were a good baler. Yeah. I mean, they really were. Um, but yeah, well, just to shoot. So, wow. Yeah. I mean, that's a, because I'm assuming he probably put up. 10,000 bales a year, I would guess. I mean, oh, gosh, I don't know looking back now. I mean, it was a big old barn, which you'll never see it on camera, but it was a lot bigger than mine down here. And, yeah, just stacker full and sometimes downstairs. I mean, yeah, I, I don't know how many bale it was, but it was a bunch. I mean, Wow. So yeah. did the 4010 run the baler then? Or? It did. Yep, sure did. Oh, he, and then once the 4230 come along, then he would use it on the – because then we would use this to pull wagons to the okay. barn with it, or be raking or something, you know, ahead of the baler yep. or whatever. But, but, yeah, it pulled the baler a lot. Huh. Yeah, that, uh, well, and, and you had the hydraulic, uh, you know, for the turn on yeah. the kick. Or, well, no, yeah. you didn't have a, that's right, no kicker. So, yeah, yep. yeah really, so. you wouldn't even need the hydraulics. But, yeah. But yeah. if you were going to, they would take a fair amount of hay, and if you start pushing it, you did want a little more power than an H is yeah. going to have. agreed. Yep. You know. Yep. Yeah, I don't think an H would have would have probably handled it, to be honest with you. I, I don't right. know, but I just. I, well, and. And uh, it, this was more than enough power for a baler, but you know, if, if you're in small fields in a little bit of hills, you get a full wagon behind oh, yeah. you in the baler, it can yeah. push. Those balers were heavy, even for being a square yeah. baler. But usually the fleet was back then, once the crops were in, the H was on an international sickle mower. He never had a mower conditioner. Oh, no, never, never conditioned. Had, nope, everything he had was sickle mower. And never had, never owned a tether his whole life, which even, even back then, though, the tethers weren't real popular here. I don't yep. they might have been up north, but they, they weren't here. In fact, those probably didn't catch on around here until the early 2000s. So you're no conditioner, which is strange, because he's raising clover. Yeah. Yep. How did he get it dry? I mean, was he was he blending like brome or, or something? Not, not usually, but, and we've talked about this some on TikTok and other places that I, I know, and I'm not, I'm not getting into politics here, you know, when you, when you mention climate change. Yep. I, I'm not going down this man-made climate change road, but the climate has changed. When I was a kid, it didn't rain in the summertime. It, it just didn't. Okay. It, it just really didn't. I mean, you just counted on it. You mowed the yard till about June 1st and <laughs> left the mower parked all summer. And then in, sometime in August, you'd start it back up, you know? So it seemed like there was never an issue. I, I, I bet I can name on one hand the amount of times I ever remember him getting hay wet. It just seemed like you just laid her down with the sickle mower and generally you waited a whole day and then the, day after that you would rake it 
And then sometimes if you was got a real heavy dew or something, he might have you, and he'd always have me go out on this, and he'd have you take the, because it was a side delivery, right? You know, a bar rake. New Holland? Uh, it was a Ford, an Ford. old Ford, just an original okay. Ford, no okay. paint on it. But he would have me go out there, and, and you had to drive right beside the windrow, and that, that rake would just yep. catch it and just roll it just, just tip one it. time. Yep. Yep. And, yep. and then after that, by after dinner, you'd bail it then. So. Okay. Yep. Yeah, because... You gotta have the right guy on the rake, and I mean, as a kid, as a kid, you spent a lot of time raking hay. I did because that was the kid's. Yep. Yeah, job. from the time I was seven, eight years old, I started yep. raking a lot of hay. Yeah, and I mean, there was a butt chewing if you, because depending on how you hit, so when it's laid out flat, it wasn't so bad. But once it's in a windrow, you could easily just put the windrow over yeah. a few feet exactly the way it was. Yep, exactly. And back then too, you know, because on them sickle mowers, they had that that arm that would kind of kick it kick in the wheel track yep. so when you come on your next pass you weren't dragging yep. you know so in a sense you had two wheel track you just had to straddle yeah. the mode area and you were good you know it wasn't like it was scattered out with a tether and you could be missing some or, yeah. or you know you just run right down where he had mowed it and so it was pretty easy was that a seven foot sickle mower then I bet uh, it, was a, it must have been a smaller one right yeah i don't think it was a nine because i remember this tractor would would just drive right over the top you yeah. were right on the two they looked like wheel tracks but there was no grass in there you know from yeah because if she was narrowed up yeah um on a yeah um, there wouldn't be no nine foot right yeah, yeah. you'd be driving on the hay and that yeah. was always a no-no if yep. you were driving on the hay and i remember by the usually by the third cutting he'd have me double windrow it which was hard turning on the end because you know them rakes yeah you know you didn't want to be turned into the rake but yeah you'd do your outside then you'd come down you just go right down and right back and throw two together you know <laughs> then you'd have a windrow about that tall I remember the first time raking for the neighbor, he had me on a, a 50, and uh, I was raking, and, and, and it got a flat tire. It, they were old tires. It just got a flat tire, and I got accused of putting the rake into the, and I'm like, you can look at the teeth. I didn't do it. But, exactly. You know, but I was pretty happy because then they drug the 50 out of the way, and I got a 730 diesel, yep. and I'm like, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> like, well, and I don't know if you felt that way, but as a kid, so you tend to get stuck with like for me it was the m the 50 the a the 400 that kind of stuff yep. so when you got to drive this like oh, yeah. you really felt like yeah you know yep agreed yep and it was nice though because once i got old enough to start working ground at i'm gonna say nine years old then this was all you had because he was planting with the H. So it's like, oh, this is sweet, you know? So yeah. I get to run this and he's running the H, you know? And I don't remember the field cultivator and it, it did not have one ounce of paint on it. I have no idea what brand it was, but it, it didn't even fold. I mean, it was a 12 footer, okay. whatever it was. And that's what we run on it, so. Well, and what was better than when you're a kid and you're driving this and somebody you know yeah. sees you drive, especially yeah. if it's another kid. Yeah. Exactly. Like, and they're just like, you're just like, wow, look at me, yeah. you know. <laughs> and the funny part is, is when you're a kid, you don't think either. But by then, this tractor was over 20 years old when I started driving it. You know, it was in the early yeah. 60s, and this would have been in the early to mid 80s. You know, to, you know, to me back then, you know, this was the newest and the biggest and the best. Oh. I was 20 some years old already. So, yeah, you. Uh, well, I can remember. Uh, if, if like if you got to drive through town oh yeah you're just like oh i hope yeah. all the kids yeah. hope cool you see somebody see yep sure enough <laughs> <laughs> yeah so that and like you said on the age thing i think about that a lot um so like my 8200 to me that's still an 8200 is a pretty new yeah tractor, to me that's right? a new tractor right. i mean it really is yeah. yeah and i think about that in uh relation to my kids and i'm like oh yeah. Wait a minute. Yeah. Like that's older than the stuff that I thought was yeah. kind of old. Right. Then. Yep. You know, and uh and it's uh, yeah, having a I always it seems like there was a group of people, and I don't know, maybe it's like that around here, but there'd be people that didn't even really farm that had tractors. Yeah. And stuff, yep. you know. Sure enough. So I was kinda as a farmer, I was always like, Well, I want something that's just a little bit that you have to have a farm in order to have. Yeah. You know. Yep. Where right. uh you know yeah yeah when i was a kid eight nine years old this was the biggest tractor on the planet i mean you know oh. there, there wasn't nothing gonna out, outdo or outwork this tractor you know which we know is not true but in my eyes it was well 100 horsepower was a 
Yeah. It was a fairly big deal. When I was a kid, this tractor was cranking 135 horse. Really? And now it's cranking 125. When, when I put the turbo back on it, and then Nick's dad, we had him rebuild the fuel pump. Did I don't know they even really rebuild it? There was it was leaking a little bit, so he put some O rings in it and just kind of spruce, spruced it up, made sure there wasn't nothing majorly yep. wrong with it, and put it back on. But he said, "Well, how much horse you want out of this thing?" He said, "I could really make her smoke." And I said, "Well, let's let's not do that, you know." And so we agreed on one twenty five. So he said that, and then he just went off of turning the screw. He said that should be about one twenty five, and I'd say it's probably pretty close. So. Okay, okay, so. I bet I'm I'm gonna guess you guys put a clutch in it along the way here and there with that much power. Uh, I know when I split it and put a clutch in it when I redone it here, it had the heavy duty clutch in it then, oh. and then I found my uncle gave me the owner's manual, and actually in the very back of that, my grandpa had written in 1994, I believe it was, they overhauled this tractor and put a clutch in it. Okay. In '94. Then, and I don't know if the clutch was out or going out or if it was one of them, if there was something else wrong and it's like, now's the time to do it. Cause we're, you know, I, I don't know. The, yeah. I don't ever remember it. I don't ever remember this tractor leaving a set ever my entire life ever where somebody had to come get you because this tractor's down. I don't yep. ever remember that ever. Well, and they probably, I'm assuming when they put the 4020 engine in, as long as they had it split, maybe put a clutch in it. You know, I don't know if they did actually. Yeah. I think, uh, I think because I had a deer mechanic helping me of an evening, he would just, I was doing the work, but I told him like, will you come out and just make sure I done this right? Yep. And he'd give me the yay or nay. And actually, yeah, I think uh, once we did that, he said then, he said the clutch didn't look that bad, but he's like, well, you're this far into it. If you're going to yeah. repaint it, let's not split it. But he, he did tell me, don't ever put a heavy duty clutch in one of these. He's, oh, really? He said, yeah, he said, because it you'll can tear start, up the rear end. Yeah, you'll start tearing up flywheels and other stuff. So. Okay. Yep. Because, so. I mean, that's a fair amount of power, but I bet I bet what saved it over the years was he didn't have big equipment. Yeah, it didn't have nothing to really hurt it, per se. Right. Yep. Yeah. And, and that was how they bought it. And to my understanding, the best my uncle could remember, I'm pretty sure he said he bought it on an auction out of Assumption, Illinois in 1981 or two. And he was pretty sure that this tractor was bought new at Sloan's in Assumption okay. back then. But I have no history on who bought it new or if there's been... Five owners or one owner, I have no idea. So. so was his plan when he bought it just to use it in the construction business or did he think he was maybe gonna farm? No, he just, he bought it to use a little bit. And of course that was the eight, you know, coming into the eighties, things weren't real rosy right. farming. And it's like, well, you know, dad could kind of use something. So I'm just gonna buy this and then maybe we can both use it. You know, if in the off season, if he's not using it, I can or whatever. And then it was just kind of one of the things that after he bought it, then he just kind of never left. So. Yeah. Well, and obviously he probably was connected to the farm. Sure, he was. Yeah, that. absolutely. Yep. And, and he's one of them guys, he always liked tractors, even though he didn't farm. He's got a whole collection of them now, you know, that yeah. he just likes to have them. And, oh, yeah. I've never been like, I don't, there's not enough tractors around this yeah. farm. Like, I'll take yep. as many as. Yep. Exactly. You know. Yep. Um, so that, yeah, that's kind of interesting. So now you're a kid growing up and I bet you couldn't wait to get down to grandpa's as yes. much as you could, right? Yep, absolutely. Every waking minute I was off school. I When school got out the middle of May, I went to grandpa and grandma's and stayed there and didn't come home till August, literally. Stayed there the whole summer. Just okay. stayed. Every weekend, every holiday from school, I was there. So were you going to farm? I mean, was that yeah. as a kid, that was your plan? Yep. yep, I knew from the time I was a little bitty kid. Yep. And at what point, so you didn't end up taking over your grandpa's farm? No, nope. It, well, and that was a timing deal, which A, it, it was going to be really tough to make a living there with, with everything so strung out. And uh, you, you'd have to have a couple guys, because, you know, back then it was my grandpa and usually there was an uncle or my dad. You know, there's always kind of somebody, yeah. me, that kind of helped make things flow, where if I would have took that over, and I was 15, 16 years old. And yeah, I mean, you just yeah. feasibly wasn't going to do it then, but it was going to take some manpower just to make it all work logistically because you're strung out and pieces and patches. It's not like you had a square 80 and you can feel gold a little bit and then plant a little bit. It's like, well, I've done three acres here and five acres yep. here. You know, you're just running all over creation. So, okay. So yeah, at some point it dawned on you that this probably isn't going to yeah. be. Yep. So when did your grandpa quit then? I think he officially quit around 95-ish, thereabouts, somewhere right in there. And then when dad took it over, 
he, he would help dad some, not a lot. I mean, if dad was in a pinch and needed something, he would yep. help, but he didn't get up every day and right there going, you know. So then when did he uh, sell? Because he, he ended up selling the farm. Yeah, he right? did. I'm going to say it was in 2000 and three-ish thereabouts okay and it was it was a it was a big farmstead i mean and i'm not joking the the yard was probably three or four acres okay. i mean it was huge yep. and i think at the time he was probably 84 grandma was pushing 90. okay and yeah it was, and it was just getting logistically he's like we just we can't stay here and take care of this place and, you know with yep. all the outbuildings you know we're just going to get run down and he didn't want to see that and with 15 kids it's like how are you going to do that? You know what I mean? Yeah. This is going to be a disaster trying to, you know, th these three want it. <laughs> these three don't care. These nine are right. stuck in the middle. Yep. You know, yeah. it's easier if I just sell it and then here it is for sale, whatever. If, you, if one of you wants to buy it, then come buy it. You know, it, uh, that's just the easiest way to do it. So. Well, and, and, and even for you, uh, if you would have pushed your dad to say, hey, I, I want to own the farm or whatever. Right. There's still 14 other kids. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. That. Yeah. So, so nobody was going to get a deal. I mean, you know how it is. You yeah. can't get three or four people to get along, let alone 15. Right. And yeah. so it's just, here it is and that's it. So, so when your dad was farming there, they kept the cattle. Yep. Um, and then just raising hay. Yep. So they did, they kept all your grandpa's machinery then at that time. Dad bought some of his own, um, yeah used some of grandpa's maybe even bought a little bit of his but dad ended up dad dad ran these when grandpa was farming like so my dad had his own construction business that was his bread and butter yep and he had a few cattle on the side and so he retired from the construction business that's when grandpa was retiring from farming so dad's like well i've got all these cattle so i'll just go ahead and farm it for a few years and then when yep. i'm done i'm done you know so but dad didn't use as tractor wise dad didn't use any of grandpa's stuff dad bought a 1468 international and an 806 and that then was his two tractors and okay so he never dad never used any of this stuff so then your grandpa ended up selling the machinery right yes had an auction yep okay but they didn't let 4010 go nope because your uncle, uncle was like i'm keeping it yep gonna keep it yep that's so. that's a lucky break it is yep and the whole story of the way that i got this is kind of funny because after grandpa had sold everything and whatever and of course, by then, you know, I was getting married and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, and, and family, you you sort of grow apart. You know, you're not. Yep. Oh, well, yeah. You know, you just don't have time to mingle with everybody. And so I didn't know where this tractor ended up. For all I knew, it got sold. I had no clue. And at the time, it wouldn't have mattered. You know, I was just getting married, having kids. I couldn't have afforded to do anything with it anyway. And uh, one day, and it's been 12 years ago, probably, my uncle had built a new house and built a new shop about like this or whatever. And he put one of them barn quilts on the end of it. Yep. And so he went way back away from the shed and he took a picture of that quilt and he put it on Facebook. He's wanting to show it because it did. It looked really neat on his barn. Well, it caught my eyes. I seen this John Deere tractor set way off in the distance over here by the trees. And so I messaged him. I said, hey, is that that old 4010 sitting there? He said, yep, sure enough. I said, no kidding. I said, I never knew what happened to that. Oh yeah, I still got it. I said, well, don't ever sell that tractor. I said, I want it. Don't ever get rid of it. Yep. Fair enough. He says, you know, I'll make sure you get it. He said, if something happens to me, I will make sure you get that tractor. So left it at that, didn't, didn't think nothing about it. And uh, I don't know, it's been, well, it'd been the summer of 22 then sometime that spring or whatever, I run into him and I said something about, hey, you ready to get rid of that old 4010 yet? And he said, yeah, he said, I think I would. He said, come see me sometime. So immediately, I mean, I, I gave it like two days. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> gotta go see him, you know? So went down and seen him and I said, you know, what do you want for the old tractor? And he said, nope. He said, I don't want nothing. He said, that tractor meant more to you than probably anybody on this planet. He said, I'm gonna bring it up to your house and drop it off and it's yours. So there it is. Hey. Yep. And he was just tickled pink once I restored it. I mean, thought that was the greatest thing. He come up and drove it and just thought it was, I mean, he couldn't get over it. Cause actually when I started on this, I started in, I think he dropped this off June 12th and by August, 20th, I think it was thereabouts. It looked just like that. I mean, I, when yeah. I started on, I mean, I nonstop day and night yep. and got, and he, he just couldn't believe it. He couldn't even believe it was the same tractor. You know, he just tickled paint. So, well, and, and, uh, and you, you used it. So yep. this has been, uh, for your own farming. Yep. This has been doing. Yeah. Yep. Been drilling wheat with it, running auger, mow. Yeah. I, 
I refuse to have stuff just sitting in the corner of the shed. And then you think, man, I want to get the old 4010 out. And you get to the end of the driveway and the fuel's all snotted up and it won't run and everything yeah. else. And I, I just refuse to have that. I love this tractor. I want to enjoy it. And I just use the crap out of it. I don't care. It's got dirt on it. It'll wash. And if yeah. it's all beat up by the time I'm 65, then my kids can either sell it. They can say, hey, that was dad's. We want to redo it again. I mean, my kids would have no memories of that if it just sat over there with a blanket. No, absolutely. Over. So what good does, you know, if, that, if that's what my grandpa would have done, what kind of memories would I have had with it? Well, it just sat in the corner yeah. my whole life. So, nope. What, what's amazing is that um, it did some work that probably a lot of, a bigger tractor would have been doing like that no-tail yeah. drill and stuff yeah. was yep. um that had been a job for a bigger tractor yeah. and it, so it's not like it's necessarily getting pampered no and it's nope i just you know yeah i run it and she'll either go or blow and it is what it is <laughs> well, yeah, and if it did you fix it yeah exactly and a funny story on that like i say this tractor i never ever remember it leaving a set in anywhere i mean it just ran but there was something messed up i don't remember if it was in the hydraulics and a in a pump i don't know what the deal was but it was in the off season so it was in like august or something yep got to grandpa and grandma's and grandpa said hey that old 40 tins down at whirly brothers at vandalia john deary said you need to go down there they called and of course you know back then it was different you know you'd come down yep. so we go down there and of course I, I i didn't know you i just assumed it was set there we walk in the shop and this thing was scattered in a million pieces and i mean i was literally almost in tears i'm like they, they've ruined this track I mean, you know in my eyes it was like they just demolished this thing yep. and i thought that thing will never be the same you know and i forget they talked whatever and shoot two three days later here come a semi rolling in all back together and rolled it right off the trailer but i mean i was just devastated yeah <laughs> that's yeah well and, and i remember like seeing the first time seeing a tractor split yeah you're like they do that yep like yeah actually yeah it's, it's neat yeah you know yep. um know that uh to to have that and still use it use it yeah not, that's that's pretty cool and i mean that's i mean you don't have to be a john deere guy to go that's impressive that 60 years later this yeah. tractor can still do yep you know, and, and there's a lot of old farm tractors. That yeah, and it don't do matter what, what color, what brand, the, yep. there's tons of them going. But I just I just always thought, you know, I want to enjoy it. I, I like to hear it run. I like to drive it. And so, yeah, I, I'll, I'll be the first to nominate this job for anything. If somebody's like, oh, you know, we need to do this. I'm like, hey, I got a 4010. You know, I just I just use it. I just. Yeah. Yep. So it's that's that that part is great. Now, um, back to your grandpa for a minute. So on the farm i was going to ask you with the corn mm -hmm. did you guys pick or combine combine had a john deere 55 with a two row when i was pretty little and by the time i was 10 we jumped up to a three row so was it so, a corn special nope it wasn't a corn special just a straight 55 variable speed yep only. yep square back yes it was oh. square back yep and then somewhere in there he always so the 55 was always the corn combine i mean that's just it just left the cornet on it and that was yep. it and then somewhere in there about the same time a 4400 gas came along and i don't remember in fact i'm pretty sure the same uncle that owned this tractor owned that 4400 had it for four or five years and then he bought a 6600 diesel whoa and yeah that was a hog you know which i hell it had three four thousand hours on it whatever it was yep. and it was it it wasn't a piece of junk but i mean he done his fair share of work on it you know was it a rotary screen? Uh, yes, it was. Yes. Yep. Okay. It so sure was. rotary screen was that? Was that a hydro? It was. Yep. Oh wow, that hydro. was fancy. Yeah, I'm, I'm assuming it was one of the later ones. I don't remember if that would have been like a '76 model. '78 was the end, right? Was it? Okay, I couldn't did, remember. Did okay. it have a cloth seat? And the no, shaft? it didn't. It had the seat about yellow seat. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Did it have the shaft speed monitors where it showed the orange lights? No, it didn't. Nope, okay. it was all gauges still. Okay. Yep, that was the first combine I ever ran. I, I ran that 55 a little bit somewhere in there, just kind of, I don't remember if I sat on Grandpa's lap or he was standing there, whatever, the, but you know, it never got turned loose in it. And by then he quit planting corn, so he didn't really use it at all. But that 6600 was the first combine that I ever actually drove okay. by myself. So. Did they, uh, um, so if that was a, later on i wonder if that was a 329 or a 404 because some of them were a 404 non-turbo i believe 
this one was non-turboed, I know, but I don't, yep. I don't know what it had for an engine. I, okay. I couldn't tell you. I remember it had rice tires on it. Big old lugs. I mean, they were oh. like new rice tires. Well, they ride so good down the road, and they're just quiet. Yep, because <laughs> he'd always tell me, like, because he had a, a great big yard there that he mowed kind of by the shop, and that was kind of where you parked machinery during busy season. He'd always tell yep. me, now, don't turn that thing short, you know, because them rice tires just oh. dig in, you know, and then the lawnmowers go across there yep. and beat your teeth out. So, Yeah, yeah, rice and cane seemed like a really good idea yep. until – you got something with rice and canes yeah. and then you're like go down the road and shake the yeah. whole combine apart it makes grain tile look like a pretty good investment yeah, doesn't right. it like it does. maybe just fix the yeah. wet instead yep. of buying rice and canes exactly. you know <laughs> yeah. i know some tight old farmers that were like oh this ground is yeah. so muddy we'll put rice and canes on <laughs> yeah. that way you can really get stuck yeah like, oh that's yeah different different uh world back then yeah. but uh did they do beans then? yeah they so they were mainly beans wheat and hay so okay so he did have would he double crop beans at all generally no because he'd always have clover in with the wheat oh, so yeah so yeah there was always it was always beans soybeans into wheat into hay and then there was just enough that rotated you know however long they left it in hay two years three i don't remember how long hay lasted back then okay and, and of course they tried to do that on the stuff really close to the house there was some four miles away that you weren't going to bail, you know, and that was just always being wheat rotation, but never double cropped it. Okay. Then. So then, uh, was he running a, um, did they have dialomatic on that or did they have like that Hineker love bar or something uh, on that combine? No, because when he first got the combine, the head on it was a year round head. You remember when year round made oh, yeah. grain tables? That's what was on it first. Yep. And then, so there's a lot of oil wells. It's a big oil field. Yep. And it's, and so somebody hooked something with that head, an anchor or something that wasn't supposed to be there that was. Okay. And inadvertently hit something and it sprung that head or something. So then he went to a, a 216 John Deere head on it. But no, I don't, I don't remember any. Well, those, those uh, early heads, um, if you didn't have dialomatic or header height, some of them had header height. Where they'd just go up and down yeah, if they hit. I, I'm trying to think. Yeah, because I, I was thinking on this one, you just hit the lever once and it would just. It, it, would it probably had header height. It might um, have. I just don't remember. It's just been too long. Otherwise, I had, you know, a couple of those bean heads I had when I was starting out were just junk and they just had the orange ball. Yeah. And I'd just sit there and run yeah, the yeah, lever. Yeah, actually, that's what this had now that you mentioned that when you said the orange ball. I remember that. Yep. That's what it had. Yep. That'll tell you how hard you're yep, pushing. Sure you know? enough. Yeah, that's right. Otherwise, your only other way of telling is on the next yep. round. If you came back and it looked like yep. it was polished exactly. on the ground, maybe you had a little bit yep. too much. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, so no, no draper. No, no, I, definitely uh, no draper. How, how did your grandpa ever manage to raise 15 kids without a draper head? I, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it just. He had a high-speed planner, though, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. That was those old 1250s. Yeah, that 1250, just, you go as fast just, as you want. Yep. They're as accurate as. Yeah. Could you imagine nowadays if you told these kids that when you got to the end, you had to reach behind the seat of that H and pull a rope for the markers? <laughs> he, and it was always draped around the seat of that H. And I remember when I was a little kid, those H's, you had that toolbox on the yeah. very back. And I would sit on there with my arm loop through the shock which you you have to put your arm up where the shock wouldn't pinch it when it comes yeah, down up yeah. to the top and i'd sit there and ride for hours facing back toward the planter <laughs> just sit there and ride i remember on the m one time um you'd grab the seat you know i'd stand on that draw bar the wide you know the the yep. bracket for the draw bar basically or swinging draw bar um and hold on to the seat remember that old pan seat got rusty and it broke and i about died <laughs> yeah <laughs> Grandpa, rather <laughs> It's not like we stopped and Grandpa was like, I'm never going to let my grandson do yeah, that again. He's exactly. just like, well, good thing you were holding on. Yep, that's right. <laughs> that's right. Yep. Yeah, and I'm trying to think the, the disc that we pulled with this, and I don't remember the model. This would be probably something more for you, but it, I don't remember if it was the RW series, but it was, it was a manual fold. You had them oh. great big angle pieces that you would yes that you fold them down then you without getting killed you'd have to hold it down because the springs were trying to hold them yep. back up and get that thing out and then that's Put what it, held the uh, wing yes yeah that's yes. what locked them down that was uh, fancy if you had wings yeah yep and i i can't remember the model of that disc but that's what this pulled a lot yeah because there was the bw and the awh and that they were older i yeah thought. Yep. yep but but yeah if you had boy if you had wings i mean yeah you were, and i don't know if that disc would have been six. 14 maybe yeah right. i don't remember what it was it 
wasn't, wasn't real big. I mean, no. But she'd bark a little bit, yeah, though, yeah. with her. Yep, it would. You know, what gear would you run? Uh, fifth. Okay. Yep. Boy, Usually yeah. And Grandpa was a stickler, though. You never went over 2,000 RPMs ever. I mean, it didn't matter what you were doing, where you were going. I mean, it, you just, that was a no-no. You just didn't do that. So. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Would she send a little, would she get a cherry when you were? No, I, you know, I don't ever remember it, it doing okay. that. I, I just, I don't ever remember it. So. Huh. But it had a chrome pipe on it when I was a kid. It was, you could only see about that much on the top and bottom. It was all rust. In fact, I think I've still got it because it was on here when I got it back. Yeah. And, uh, I don't remember if I kept it or not, but it was around here for a while. So, yeah, that, uh, well, you got to have a chrome pipe. Oh, yeah. I mean, yep. Just, uh, Heck yeah. It's, uh, it's funny, you know, how you, I mean, you kind of take it for granted now that, uh, you know, Looking back, a person probably should have had a little ear protection every now and then. Yeah, but you, for sure. I mean, just sit out there, and the louder it was when you were young, you yep. know, ah, dad would just shake his head. I remember I put a chrome pipe on the 1466, and he's just like, Rrr. he was yep. just pissed. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I drilled 200 and some acres a week with it last fall. And it was the same way, you know, all day there, like, oh, this thing ain't that bad, you know. I mean, yeah. shoot, and then when you shut it off and come to the house that night, you're like, God, that's yeah. all you hear just ringing. Yeah. It's, yeah, there's some things I might have done differently growing yep. up now if I had yeah. known. one. Exactly. But. And that was funny because my grandpa was, he was always extremely easy on equipment. He didn't, he didn't tear stuff up. He didn't rod stuff. He didn't overpower or overwork it. You know, yep. he was always easy, but by the luck of the draw, he had this with an MW turbo on it. Then he had a 4230 with an M and W turbo and a straight pipe on it. So every tractor that I got to run as a kid was just louder than all get out, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yep. So, so he yeah. didn't run the 4230 real long then. No, it would have been, uh, like I say from, and I don't remember when, I'm not saying he didn't get that in 89 or 90. I just, I just don't remember, but yeah, by 96, seven, eight, sometime in there, then yeah, it was, that was yeah. it. So. Yep. And that, that had a, a Hineker year-round, didn't it? Had a year-round cab on it, yep. Okay. And I actually tracked that tractor down, and I hope someday you and I can get to do a story on that. It's yeah. setting just not very far from here, and I talk to the guy, and he don't want to turn loose of it, which is cool. I don't blame him, but yeah, yep. I tracked her down. So. Well, at least you know where it is. Yeah, exactly. Yep. And that, uh, that tractor there, was that uh, Synchro Quad Range? Yep, it was the... the quad Range. Yeah, the two, two gear yep. shifts, yep. A, B, C, D, yep. one, two, three, yeah. Yep. Okay. Sure and uh, was that an early? I don't know what year that tractor was. I'm almost wanting to say it was a 72. Would that be right? I get 73 would be the first year. Okay. So yeah. So I can't tell you what year okay. it was, and I don't. I don't okay. remember. So. But still, that was. I mean, that's pretty fancy tractor. Yeah. You know, it, in the early 90s, if you had a. Yeah. You know, yeah. like a Soundguard cab. I mean, people. The people that complain about the Soundguard cabs didn't ever do field work without a cab. Yeah. <laughs> the bad part was in that year round, the air conditioner never worked my entire life, ever. Yep. So we never ran with the doors open for whatever, because I don't think they would lock. I mean, they could have, but I think the lock mechanisms were broke, like wouldn't hold them open. Yep. So rather than letting them flop, we just always shut them. We'd always had the windows open. Yep. Remember that straight pipe inside that cab? Oh. I mean, just you just couldn't get away from it. I mean, just deafen you. Yeah. So... It yeah. was a good tractor. Well, and uh, so then if it, uh, in the fall when they're, I'm assuming you guys had gravity boxes. Had what? Did you guys have gravity boxes? Yes. Yep. And he had an old grain truck, but had a few gravity wagons too. Yep. So did this get on gravity box duty with a? It, it did some. And then once the 4230 come along, used it just because it was getting cooler by then. And it had and a cab. In, yeah, in the cab, you know. So. Yeah. Well, yeah. and if... So the wheat, was that always winter wheat? Yeah. So you'd have to drill in the fall. Yes. Yep. Too, right? Yep. Now that probably wasn't, an, you probably did tillage back then. Yeah. Yep. You? Always disc ahead of, a, uh, ahead of the drill or whatever. And it was a, gosh, I don't remember if that was a Van Deer Brunt. Van Brunt. I don't remember what, I mean, it was an old, old, old drill. I mean, one of the first box drills. And I, I just don't remember the, but it, the H pulled it too. Then, yep. So. Did it have small tires or did it have? Yeah, big it had like, okay. about like a car tire. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So then it was at least. And it was it was galvanized in color, but I don't remember yep. what if that was a van probably Brunt a Deer or... Van Brunt. Yeah. Um, was it hydraulic lift or was that mechanical? I think it was mechanical. 
I just the age, a lot of them didn't, you know, or did he have a remote? He well, had a remote on it. Or I suppose yeah, he had he did. Yep, he had one remote on it. Yep, and for his sickle mower, too, to I raise suppose, the bar. Yep. yep. So, okay. had the big old iron rod there. You'd either push or pull, you know, right? Yep, yep. yeah, up on top. Yep. Right? Sure enough. Yeah, because we had the hydraulics, and then was it the belt pulley was under it, maybe? Uh, yes. That. Yeah, I think that's right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. His was a that big long rod that went down the side of the tractor, and that's what run the hydraulics okay. on his. It ran up to yep. a little pump, and yeah. Yep. And my uncle still got that tractor too. They restored it. That H. It's still, just a straight H. Yeah, just a straight H. It's a. It was a nineteen forty eight model. I do know that. Okay, so but, right before the supers, then it was a late yep. H. And prior to that, the tractor that Grandpa traded for that H was a Silver King. Remember? Oh, really? You ever, do you ever hear a I've, I've and they, they were it. always world famed for going 45 mile an hour they said that's what they'd run had okay. a single tire on the front really run 45 mile an hour but that but, was scary oh gosh which and i i never asked him when he got that age but i know it was there my whole life and i think it'd been there for quite a while before that you know so i think the silver yeah. king i think that you're probably getting back into the 60s when he had that maybe okay. or maybe even longer i don't know but huh well, and at growing up, an M was still a yeah. good size. It was tractor. Yeah, you know. Yep. Um, so that was yeah. Going from the Silver King to the H was probably because yeah. there was a dealer where if you did need a part, you could probably get it for the H. Where I don't know where your Silver King dealer. Yeah, was. I don't know, but and I don't know whatever happened to that company. That'd be for a guy like you to research. I'm oh. sure somebody snapped him up and discontinued yeah. it or or what. And I don't yeah. know if they made other other things. You I, know, but I honestly don't. But I think there were a lot of tractors that used parts that they all kind of like a, you know, like a co-op tractor. Yeah. Yep. Cause even like a co-op tractor, certain years, it's, it's a completely different, like, right. cause they'd contract, yeah. you yep. know, with different manufacturers. Yep. So, um, yeah. Cause around us there were co-ops went fast. Yeah. Yep. But you know, all of my years though, I don't ever remember any of grandpa's tractors letting you down that H was the same way. I don't ever remember him having problems with that thing ever. Just, yeah, they just, just ran, wrong. you know, um, I'm not saying a dead battery here or there, but as far as I don't, in fact, I don't know that I ever in my life seen the hoods off of that H ever. And I mean, ever. Yeah. I mean, they, just, just never touched it. Well, there wasn't much under there if it, no. um, you know, cause that one didn't have power steering. I'm no, assuming. It didn't. Nope. Sometimes they'd put power steering on them or something, yeah. but yeah, there just isn't much to go. Yep. Yeah, and what was an H? 50 horse, if that? Oh, no, not even. So an M was, originally an M was only, I think, around 30 to 35. Really? So H was smaller than that, yeah. Oh, God, I didn't realize they were that. Wow. But like a Super H, so, and they got higher horsepower as time went by. Mm -hmm. You know, which, so we think of it now, like, John Deere, Case IH, can't wait to change their number. Right. Because then everybody has to go buy the new one. But, you know, just like the 4020 was made from, you know, 64 yeah. up until yeah. 72 and, yeah. you know, and the... Yeah, the, the, the John Deere A's and B's and M's yeah. and H's, the, it's like, I can't believe there ain't one of them setting every quarter mile. So, you know what I mean? I mean yeah. they, hundreds of thousands, like it was like 435,000 oh. H's or something. I mean, it's just an yeah. astronomical number. Yeah, it was insane. I mean, you see, you see these new generations everywhere driving around and there was literally 10 times if not more m's and h's made i mean you oh. think them things would just be piled well, everywhere yeah. and i you know um i get a lot of crap about being a john deere guy but i mean i grew up international um and i still love international i still have one but i don't tell everybody that because it's almost right. fun just to let them yeah. you know yeah. assume they you know but uh growing up my grandpa was a two-cylinder guy um because he went from horses to a GP. So that yep. made him go, well, this is great, you know. Um, but for me as a kid, I did not love the two cylinders. Right. Like, and I, I have never drove a two cylinder John Deere. I've never, oh. I've never drove one, seen thousands of them, but I've never drove one. So like, I always thought that the two cylinders were, I mean, cause like the throttle and everything, like it's, it's not like an instant, like you grab the throttle on the M and she just revs up right. or like the two cylinder, you throw it ahead and you kind of wait. And then, it, I mean, and they had power, but it was a different yeah. kind of power. But, uh, but so if I had to run, you know, like the A's, grandpa had A's and um, I, I thought the Farmall M, I like the M way better. I, I love an M. Yeah. Um, but then the, the, but the two cylinder diesels, I have a 720 diesel. Um, I, like I said, 
my grandpa's last day, I let it get sold. I mean, I, if I would have thrown a fit, I mean, I probably wouldn't have been able to pay enough to the estate, whatever. That's a whole different thing. But yeah. um, I wasn't that worried about it. Yeah. Because I'm like, ah, then damn two cylinders. But then you get a little older. When I get into my, you know, mid to late 20s, I was like, gosh, I kind of wish I had a two cylinder because it reminded me of grandpa. Right. And yeah. then I ended up, uh, but I was like, you know, the, a diesel, those two cylinder diesels are just cool. Because, yeah. like, you know, a, a 720 um, diesel had a bigger engine than an 806. Yeah. And there's it's only crazy. two cylinders. Yeah. It's unbelievable. So I, so I ended up with one of those. And it was to remind me of grandpa. Because when I did run the 730 diesel at the neighbors, yeah. you know, it was like, coming up the driveway with a chopper box and you're just right. giving her in road gear yeah. and that thing would get to the top of the driveway and it would actually, I mean, you could count in between the pistons yep. hitting and it would actually break the gravel loose a little bit when it'd get the power yep. stroke, you know, and you're like, that's cool. <laughs> it's, and it's funny too, how you, you don't know what you don't know, right? Like, yeah. you know, if, if you weren't a mechanic or didn't know how to take a tractor apart, you, you know, you can't fault you for that. You just didn't know. Right. But, as a kid, or even when, when I was 20 years old, you know, if something was majorly wrong with this, like, oh, man, you're going to have to call somebody or whatever. But then once I got it, I mean, I tore, and I'm not a motor guy. Like, I don't take motors yep. apart. That's that's not my thing. I'll gladly pay somebody to do that. Shoot, we tore right into this. I'd call Nick, you know, I'm like, now, is this how this goes? I'll come up, you know, and he, yep, do this and do that. You know, but I mean, yeah, we motor, transmission, we tore it all down. And, yeah. and when you look back, it's like when you go back, 25, 30 years, or even back to them old two-cylinder deers, it's like, why would you call a mechanic to work on this? I mean, it's like, it's, it, but if you don't know, you don't know. I mean, it, well, and, and on, that was one of the two-cylinder things was that they, they said, you know, any, a farmer can fix this himself. Yeah. Um, yep. Just they stupid were, simple. I mean, just. I kid you none, I watched a buddy of mine's dad, uh, I think, because they babbitted the bearings back then. You didn't have an insert, yep. you know, said yep. babbit bearings. And I don't know if she was losing oil pressure or something, so they was going to shim the bearings. They would shim the bearings. He cut up some beer. I think they were Schmidt beer cans, and he cut them up and put them on the backside no to shim the bearings. I'll and it there. ran just, just fine. As a matter, so his old man would, I mean, they were nuts about that stuff. But uh, <laughs> once more power, they bolted pieces of steel to the ends of the pistons. They just bolted steel to the pistons yep. to raise the compression ratio. Yep. Like, Crazy. You know. It, it's funny to think too that whether it's that 1066 sitting there, this tractor, one of your old tractors, I would almost bet you dollars to donuts, almost, that we could get the engine out of this tractor, or at least the tractor split before we could get the engine out of that John Deere zero turn mower right there. Prob <laughs> yeah. Like, and that's pretty sad. Yeah. I mean, if it's, not, it would be a pretty close race. I mean, if you had a couple guys yeah. that knew what they were doing on each one, yeah, it'd be a tough, it'd be a tough race. I think. Yeah. yeah, they're. I mean, that stuff was so simple back then that even you could get a block for your two cylinder at Tractor Supply. Is that right? Yeah, because they had the power blocks, and if you okay. find a power block, if you find a two cylinder with a power block today, just keep it quiet. Get that tractor bought because that block is worth some money because the is power that? blocks were a bigger bore. Yeah. And uh, yeah, at Tractor Supply. No kidding. Back when Tractor Supply was supply for well, your tractors. I guess I guess I never thought of that, but yeah, yeah I guess it makes sense. I guess it must have been where that come from. Yep. Be dang. So yeah, like a buddy of mine's dad would always look. He'd find an old tractor, you know, and he'd look. Oh, what's a power block, you know? Yeah. And and yep. uh, yeah, they were doing, you know, order aluminum pistons for them tractors, and just yep. and and he'd still farm with that. So, yeah. You know, yep. that's that's one I, these tractor stories. I I kick myself that I can't do that with he died before he did but you know he came home from Vietnam big family kind of like you know yep. your grandpa's family a lot of kids and just about all of the boys ended up farming but they had to go get their own farm he came home from Vietnam about a 720 diesel and yeah you know yep. it's crazy to think too when you look back at these dealerships in fact I ought to show you in the house I got a stack of here in Illinois the big farm magazines, the Prairie Farmer. And I don't know how many states that goes to, if that's strictly Illinois, but just a farm magazine yep, about yep. like successful farming or whatever. But Nick and I was looking through that one night on a podcast and we flipped back and it was a, and a, these were from like 82 or 83, I think. And we flipped to a page with international, just straight international yep. tractors. And I don't know how long it took you to count the dealers. I mean, there must have been, and these were just Illinois dealers. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was like four columns. I mean, it was just like every six miles. IH dealer, IH dealer, I mean, it's yeah. just insane. 
Yeah, and um, I look at the amount of dealers there were in our county, and we're still a very high output county in the yeah. state of Wisconsin, and there's no farm equipment dealerships yeah. left. And it's crazy to think, you know, which I know we've lost a lot of farms since then. You know, I get that, but even if you looked at the amount of dealerships back then, yeah, that were basically what you had 400 dealers servicing 4,000 farmers, and now you got two dealers serving 3,000 farmers. You know, right. it's, it's, it's disproportionate. I mean, it's, yeah, and you know, I uh, just <coughs> think when they sold, they were selling. You know, so if this 4010 um, was the main horse for 20 farms that they sell one 9RX yeah. to today, that I can't help but think that it wasn't better when they had, when they sold 20 4010s than one yeah. 9RX. Right. But I could be wrong. I guess I'm not that smart. But yeah. um, it just seems to me that that was a better time. But yeah, but and farms have been getting yeah, bigger and, for. Yeah, and I'll agree with that. It was. Back then, I mean, it was great. I don't regret any of it. I had a blast. I had a time of my life. Shaped me in a lot of ways. I, I, I wouldn't say I would never go back to it because it wouldn't bother me if I had to. Like, I, I would do it. it. Like, if somebody dropped me in a 1,000 acres tomorrow, said, you can farm it all, but you got to do it with this and a 1066 and whatever else, I'd be like, cool, I'll do it. Yeah. Where a lot of guys nowadays are, eh, you know, I don't know if I'm right, going to do that. Right. Where so you know it's a double-edged sword. I, I'm not I'm not looking to go out and just buy a whole fleet of this stuff and just start renting half the county. But but it, you know it it could be done if you wanted to. I mean, oh, people well, act like these tractors won't do anything. All they do is run an auger now. Well, they still make implements that'll fit these tractors. I mean, well, and and buy stuff and older stuff and fix it too if yeah. you had to. You know, yep, I agree. I always say that too. With I've heard guys with the new equipment thing where they're like, well, we we need to have new equipment because if the equipment breaks, we won't get our work done, but we need to get more work so we can afford to pay for the equipment. Yeah. And it's like, it's, it's a hamster wheel. Yeah. So if, if you were just farming enough, you know, like, so what would you rather do? 5,000 acres and you get to have new machinery or 500 acres and you get to have some good old right. equipment and, and, and you make a living either way. Yep. Yeah. And the older I get, I'm getting to the point where I want to put the money Right here, not in Moline, not in Racine, Wisconsin, yeah. Grand Island, Nebraska. I'm gonna put it in my yeah. pocket. And there's there's ways to do that if you're willing to set in the seat. You can get a lot done on a six row planter if you're willing to set in the seat. Oh yeah. I'm not, and I'm don't misunderstand. I'm not saying you, know, well, you could farm three thousand acres with a six row. I'm not saying that. But there's literally people around here, and I'm not joking, that farm six hundred acres with a twenty four row planter. Yeah, oh, it's yeah. like when I was in high school, there was guys around here farming 800 acres with one six row planter and getting it done just fine. They weren't yeah. stringing it out till July 4th. They were still getting it done in a timely fashion. Yeah. But you got to be willing to set the seat. Right, right. Well, and I mean, back then, uh, especially if there's a lot of family, yep. somebody can always be, yeah. you know. Um, so I, I think we're all over equipped I for the so. most part. Yeah. You know, and that's, that's where the, the slowdowns, no, I, I, when people talk about like 2015, 2013, 2014, and then, you know, till like COVID times or whatever, and they talk about the, I've heard, I've actually heard people call it a farm crisis, and I kind of laugh a little bit, but there was a slowdown, but I think it hit the equipment more because guys are so over-equipped yeah. that, okay, we just won't buy anything. Yeah, I can see that. Where... So when the 4010 came out, that tractor replaced, and the equipment it brought replaced a lot. Yeah, like you, you did. literally did a lot more work yeah. because of that. Where today it's just, I, yeah, I don't. I, I, it's more of a tax game almost. I've got a really nice 8285, and it's got 1,200 hours on it. But man, I'd sure like to have this eight. 240 or whatever. I don't even know. I yeah. can't keep up with it nowadays. Yeah. You know, this tractor is clearly not worn out. Got thousands of hours of life left in it, but we're worried that we can't make the deal. You know, I mean, what are we doing? I mean, well, your grandpa planted with an H in a yeah. six row. And we're talking in the mid 90s. Yeah. And there's 400 horsepower tractors pulling 16 row planters. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. 
I mean, but I'm assuming that that H probably had uh, uh, front wheel assist. Then. Oh, uh, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Big, mount big duels. turbo on. Yeah, yeah. yeah oh, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. like, so yeah. we're we're over equipped for sure. But and and that's all right because, like, I like tractors more than like I I don't I don't want to own a boat. Yeah, I could care less. Yep. Like I'd rather, but. Um, yeah, this and and I hear guys tell me that it's funny. I'm not knocking them. You know, it's whatever. But you know, they'll they'll get a, a pretty nice big front wheel assist and say, well, you know, I I didn't really need that, but I'll kind of grow into. You know, if we pick up more ground, then we don't have to trade. So then they do pick up more ground. Well, this thing ain't big now. We got to be yeah. a four wheel drive. You know, it's like right. you she didn't gain anything. No, I know, I know. <laughs> and then it's fine. I'm not knocking people to each their own. You know it. Yeah, I I do think that. I can't blame a farmer for wanting to get bigger. Sure. There's, I get that. Um, and there's other reasons to get big. There's, there's bringing family yeah. in, et cetera. Right. But I do hope, I guess there's one thing I would like to say to some of these guys is we hear all the time that we need to get young people involved in farming. Young people aren't interested in being just the guy that runs the sprayer yeah. all summer long and doesn't right. see his family. Like, right. If you want to get young people involved in agriculture, you better have some opportunity. Yeah. So maybe you're that big farmer. Maybe you give the guy that's working for you a crack at some ground. Or yeah. if it just means trading for the next size, bigger combine, maybe just let somebody else yeah. run that. I mean, and, and I'm not saying you guys have to do this or anything, but... Think about it a little bit when you're going to complain about young guys not wanting to get involved in farming. It isn't a lack of young guys that want to farm. There's a ton of young guys. Oh, yeah, there's a farm. ton. Ton. You yep. know, I mean, I'm, we, I'm the type anymore. When I was 25 years old, I thought, man, I would love to farm 8,000 acres. That don't turn me on in the least now. It, it don't. Yeah, you just don't. I don't care about farming half the county. If I can farm 1,000 acres and make a living, totally content. I'm not out chasing the next. I, I don't see any sense in buying yourself a job, you know. I see yeah. so many guys that are big farmers and they don't own a lot of land, so it's all rented, but it's that hamster wheel. It's, well, I picked up another 500, so now I need a, one more employee, a bigger combine, another semi, another grain cart. Well, now I've got all this, and so i got to pick up another 500 to pay for that, and it just, it just never ends. And I, well, I just don't want to, I don't want to be a slave to the bank or anybody. No. I want to be my own thing. No, and I, um, I, some of those older farmers that owned 300 acres and they got debt free and free and clear. I, I want to be that guy. Yeah. I've, there's been numerous people in this community that farmed three to 500 acres their whole life. Wasn't putting on a big show when they went to the field, had very nice old equipment yep. that maybe their dad had bought new years ago. And then the boys just ran it and it got them all the way through their career. And I mean, I guarantee you, these guys were paying boatloads of taxes because they owned some land. Yep. Weren't spending it on nothing. You get into a down economy like this, and didn't phase them a bit. You run nope. into them in town, nope. and they're just, is that, you know, ah, we'll be all right, you know, because they yeah. don't owe nothing to nobody. Because when things slow down, yes, that that crazy rent yep. drops, like right? the the yep. one that everybody's talking about. But in general, it's not like everybody's going to drop their rent. Yeah. You're still your margin goes away where the guy that owns that land is just like, huh, whatever. Yeah. So we were just talking about putting the turbo back on it because it didn't have the turbo when it came back to you. When it came, so my whole life it did. And then when I got it back two years ago, it did not have the turbo on it then. It had been taken off when the engine was replaced. And the manifold and everything was missing? Yep, all of it. Yep, it was back to stock. Okay. Yep. So it had an MW pan back in the day though too. Yep, it did. It did. Yep. So that... I suppose they scrapped that motor because it was bad. Yeah, yep. And I, I have no idea if, if when that was done, if the mechanic that done it all knew what that stuff was worth and sold it, let it go. You know, I have no idea or, what happened to it. Or but. it might have just ended up. Who knows? Yeah. Yep. But the guy, Jake Renner down there at Belleville, done me a solid, cut me a really good deal. I got 2200 bucks in the whole set. I had to buy the pan from another guy, give 1000 bucks for it, I think 1200 for the manifold turbo. So I got 2200 bucks in the whole turbo kit. Okay. Which, I mean, they done me a solid on that. Uh, which, yep. I mean, these these ain't as high as some tractors. I mean, you're not going to have five grand in putting a turbo on one. Yep. But they were very fair on that. But yeah. I asked my uncle when he brought this up. We got to talking. 
And uh, like I say, when he bought it originally, it had the turbo on it when he bought it. But the selling point when he was buying it or whatever, yep. you know, they were trying to sell it. Well, it's got this M&W turbo. And he couldn't remember, but he said, I'm just about positive that M&W turbo kit in 81 or whatever was like 600 bucks. And somebody could maybe correct me on that. I could be totally way off base, but that's what he said he thought it was. It was like 600 for the pan, the manifold, the turbo, all of it. But that, don't hold me to that. That was, well, that was a fair amount of money because I would guess even in 81, um, 82, a 4010 diesel was probably a $5,500. That, yeah, that's what I was going to say. Tractor. It was probably 10% of the value of the tractor, the turbo back yeah. then. I mean, yep. it's a $6,000 tractor, $600. I, right. I don't know. I mean, yeah, that's, you know, yeah. Actually, if you really want to make a lot of money, invent a, a time machine, and then don't tell anybody else about it and just go back and yeah. keep bringing. <laughs> yeah. Or if you have a way to pour castings, yes. you need to find a way to start making these pans again because you will be very wealthy in very short yeah. order. Yep. Yep. So it's, yeah, it's funny. Could you, well, and in a way, in a way, like when the, 8000s came out and stuff in the end of the 90s and the 2000s when the MXs were out and you know and um, when you could get a Steinbauer or something that's the same thing they were doing back then yep agreed yep. and I guess probably more so on the deer side so from the M&W stuff the red M&W stuff is is probably at least twice as expensive yeah. if not three times and, yeah at least yeah um then the the deer stuff, and I and I think that was because they sold a lot more deer stuff. Number one, they made more deer tractors, but number two, they deer did not have a turbo forty twenty until nineteen seventy one with the forty three twenty. Exactly, because yep. the forty five twenty is not a forty twenty. Yeah, and it's, even a lot of the thirty series, like Grandpa's forty two thirty yeah. from the factory, didn't. Have, I'm not saying you couldn't have got a turbo from the factory. I don't know. His didn't. I mean, that was an M and W. I mean, it was stamped right on it. But. My guess, you know, thinking about that, so seventy two was a great Russian grain robbery. Set off the the farm economy to just go nuts, right? Mm -hmm. So there were, you couldn't just go to your deer dealer and buy a new tractor off the right. lot. Like they they didn't have enough tractors. There was that much, you know, um, you know, that many guys wanted a new tractor. I wonder if they couldn't get a forty four thirty. And maybe they thought, well, we'll get the 4230, right. we'll put Could the, be. you know, yep. that would be my guess. But yep. yeah, on the red side, so the deer side really didn't have that turbo 43, the, the 540 RPM, you yep. know, smaller tractor with the power until 71, where on the red side, 1206 came out, what, 65. Yeah. So you could get, yeah. you know. Yep. The only part of the M&W turbo kit that I'm missing is the fan shroud. And you about got to know what you're looking for in order to even tell that it's an M&W. But it, it's basically, it's a little bit deeper. Okay. So it comes back a little farther. And then they had a, I'm trying to think, this is a, well, this ain't the right blade. So I think from the factory, the fan was six blades. And yep. then you could put a seven, was part of the M&W turbo kit on it as well. Yep. And so I actually, uh, this is this is an eight blade. So this that's actually is a trick you can do. I had a guy tell me, for a 2940 John Deere tractor, this is an eight blade fan and the fins are pitched a lot more. Yep. And so like if this tractor's running on an auger and I got it sitting here running at 1500 RPMs, standing right here, it'll almost blow your hat off. Really? I mean, that thing blows a pile of okay. air. I mean, it, it moves a lot of air. So I done that just because, not that I would have needed the shroud and the fan for what I'm doing per se, especially having the oil pan and all that. But I, I knew at the time this tractor was gonna be sitting on an auger a lot. And I thought, well, I'm not gonna be around it somebody else yep. may not be and it's just like just one piece of mind that it was i think 130 bucks for that fan or something so i'm like i'll just slap it on there and, and we're yeah. good i mean yeah it runs super cool so that is a trick for a 2940 tractor the fan will bolt right onto one of these huh. and you can keep your existing shroud and all that and it moves a pile of air huh so yeah that's uh no it it makes the the tractor having the the M&W stuff on yeah, there. It just I like does, it. you know. Would you ever put the M&W decal on it if you had one? I don't think I would just for the simple fact this particular tractor never had it. How, now, when I was a kid, had it had it, yeah. I would have probably put it back okay. on. But I don't think I ever would now. So, You know, yeah. so does this still have an oil bath air cleaner? 
Yes, it does. It does? Yep, it sure does. Okay, because yep. I thought some of them, they switched to dry when they did that. I know a 4020 was, but yeah, this one's still oil bath on this Okay. One, so, yep. Okay. Yeah, the 4010 I had was oil bath, but I was thinking that they made some, some of them got converted. Did they? With, yep. But, uh, you know, maybe when you add the turbo, somebody would do that, but. Uh, yep. Huh. Yeah, and actually an oil bath air cleaner technically is more efficient. Than, That's what they say, yeah. Yeah. Yep. It's just, you have to maintain them. Yep. I know I was nervous. Nick come and help me. We had to run the, the oil line from the turbo. And we were really nervous, or I was. Nick does it a thousand times about drilling into the block, you know, to, oh, to yeah. tap that. Yep. And when we were switching the pan out, took the factory pan off to put the M&W on. I was like, well, now's the time. Yeah. And yep. so, and it did. We took a shot back and stuck inside there as he was drilling. And yeah, it didn't get a speck of metal in it and cleaned yep. it all out. And away we went. But you know, I was nervous, but Nick, that ain't yeah. nothing to him, second nature, you know, so. Well, and if it did hurt a John Deere, it wouldn't hurt his feelings yeah, anyways, right? Exactly, exactly, <laughs> that's right. Yep, yep, so yeah, sorry I didn't clean it up. I mean, I, I generally leave it in its work clothes. I mean, I, I'll get it out every couple months and hose it off, but you just caught me when I was replacing the cable, so yeah. even though it is a good looking tractor, it still breaks down, so. Yeah, well, I don't think there's any warranty left after 60-some nope. years. If it had sat over there with a bed sheet in it, though, it would have been broke for the next 40 years, and nobody would have known or cared yeah. or fixed it. So, Yep. Yeah. Well, now that you got the uh, three-point cable working, you better find yourself a plow for it. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah, <laughs> yep. I think it's actually going to get a PTO ditcher put on it, so that'll really freak people out when there's dirt blowing all oh, over yeah. it. But the guy that painted this, phenomenal painter, what you get, Hardly tell with all the dirt, but I mean, just done an excellent job. But he told me, he said, you can take a hammer to that paint. It's auto. I didn't use John Deere paint. He used, he used automotive yep. PPG. Yep. He said, you can take a hammer to that paint. You'll be fine. So I've never tried him on yeah, that. But, <laughs> <laughs> but no, I just use it. If it gets scratched, it gets scratched. I don't care. I just, yeah. I'm not going to go out and abuse it, but I'm going to use it. So. Yeah. Well, there. So now you guys know the rest of as Paul yep. Harvey would say, the, the rest, rest of the, of the story, story, right? That's right. Of the 4010. So, yep. well, thanks, Tony. Yep, thank you.